Hi, have you ever wanted to make a catwalk for your cats? Yeah, neither did I. But we're going to make one anyway. My name is John Bryant, and we're going to make some catwalks which can also be used as floating shells. And I'm going to show you how to make it fun. Okay, let's get started. I had planned on uh, going to the big box store and purchasing some 2x8 lumber uh, to make the shelves out of, or the catwalk. And when I got there, I discovered that anything over the size of a 2x6 was really not very good lumber. Oh, it might have been good lumber, but there were uh, a lot of knots in it, and it was really uh, wet from all the moisture. I guess maybe the stacks had been sitting outside or something, so I didn't want to use that. So what I did was I purchased uh, 2x4s and 2x6, and the first thing I'm going to do is cut off the edges. If you look at a 2x4, maybe you can see that, if I, how it's rounded over on the corners. I'm just going to run that through my table saw and flatten that off on both the 2x4 and the 2x6. And then I'm going to glue those together. I'm going to laminate them up, put them in uh, the clamps, and let that dry. So I'm going to take care of that right now. Okay, I made the cuts on both my 2x4. You Hopefully, maybe you can see how the edges are squared over now. 2x4 and 2x6, and it's going to be a really easy glue up. Just going to take some, you can take white Elmer's glue will work just fine. I've got some tight bond. And using my finger, you can get your brush if you want to. Keep your fingers out of the glue. I found that the finger works just fine for me. So I'm going to spread the glue out. You want to get a nice even coat of the glue. Try to get it all the way to the edges. And what you're looking for when you clamp these two pieces together is just a little bit of squeeze out of the glue. You don't want a whole lot. That means you've used too much glue. But you want to make sure that there is some squeeze out. So I'm going to put my two pieces together. And I don't have them cut to exact length. Take my bar clamps, close them up, and then I'm going to start applying a little bit of pressure to draw the two pieces together. And one thing to notice when you do clamp together pieces, there's usually going to be a little bit of wiggle when the wood comes together, so you want to be aware of that. Make sure that you uh, get it in place and that it stays in place. I'm going to make sure we got it on a good level surface and make sure the boards are lined up properly. I've glued together my 2x4 with my 2x6. I'm going to leave it in the clamps for an hour or so. I'll come back and then I'll put this piece through the planer and get it down to the proper thickness. Okay, so while we're waiting for our glue to dry on our lumber, I've got a piece of masonite. This is also called uh, hardboard. It's quarter of an inch thick, and I'm going to cut a piece off that is two and a quarter inches wide by two feet long, which will be the length of our uh, shelf when we're finally done with it. Uh, and this is going to act as the front guard rail on the shelf so that if the cat lays down and falls asleep, hopefully it won't fall off the shelf. Okay, so our glue has dried. I'm going to loosen the clamps and take our piece of lumber out of the clamps and I'm going to take it over to the planer and plane it down. Right now the thickness of the 2x4 and 2x6 is uh, one and a half inches. I'm going to plane that down to about one and a quarter uh, just to take a little bit of the thickness out of it so it doesn't look so bulky and to take a little bit of the weight off of it. Oh, and before I forget, you don't have to plane this down. If you don't have a planer, that's fine. Just take a scraper, scrape off the uh, glue that is squeezed out, take some sandpaper to it, and uh, you'll be good to go. You can leave it this thickness. I just happen to like the look of it a little bit better when it's been planed down. 
So I've got it planed down to the proper thickness. It's about an inch and a quarter thick. I'm going to take my miter sled, put it on my table saw, and cut it to the final length. Now one of the coolest things about making this type of floating shelf or floating catwalk as it may be is that it doesn't take any type of special hardware to be able to hang it. Uh, you're going to have your lumber and you're going to use a dowel rod along with a couple of screws and that's all it takes to hang this on the wall. So the first thing we're going to do is drill a couple of holes to accept the dowel rods which will go through the back and down into the wood probably five or six inches something like that so we're going to mark out where we're going to drill our holes and uh, i'll get my drill out and my spade bit and we'll drill some holes now before you drill the holes for your dowel rods you need to determine which is going to be the top side of the shelf and which is going to be the bottom side of the shelf you need to be aware of where this shelf is going to go so that you can make that determination. In the case of this particular shelf or catwalk, it's going to be about six feet uh, off the ground. So most people aren't going to be able to see the top side of it. So I want to make the bottom side the good side because most people are going to be shorter than where the shelf is and they're going to be seeing the bottom side of the shelf. So I am selecting to make the good side the bottom. Now that I've selected the top side and the bottom side, I need to select the front and the back, and I think I've got it oriented the way that I want it. This is going to be covered up by the lip of masonite. There's going to be about an inch overhang on that. Um, so I think this is how it's going to be oriented on the wall. So on the back, I'm going to make a couple of arrows pointing upward. So that I know which side I want up. Now that I found uh, my front, my back, my top and the bottom, I need to determine where this is going to go on the wall and more importantly where the studs are in that wall. Now this particular one I know is going to go in the corner. So there is a stud right here in the corner so I'll be able to drill into the wall through here. And there is another stud at the 15 inch mark. So I'm going to put my piece of wood down. I'm going to come over 15 inches and mark that because I know that that's where I'll be drilling for a screw to go into the stud in the wall. I know that there's going to be another one right here at the end which will go into a stud in the wall and that allows me to know where I can put my holes for the dowel rods. So I'll probably put one I'd say that's probably five or six inches from this end and I will come in the same from this end about five or six inches and I'll make a mark so I'll know that that's where I'm going to be drilling my holes for the dowel rods. So I've got my uh, marks on here where I'm going to be drilling uh, the holes for my dowel rod. I've got my spade bit loaded into my electric drill and I'm going to eyeball it and try to uh, keep the drill perpendicular to the board as best I can. And if you notice I went down as far as I possibly could with this uh, spade bit in my drill. So I've got a couple of holes drilled for the dowel rods. One will be going in there and one will be going in there. But the next thing I'm going to do is set my rip fence about an inch and a half away from the blade and I'm going to make a rip cut all the way down through here about an inch and a half from the back of the shelf. And I'll show you what that's for in just a minute. So I've just got finished making my rip cut all the way through the length of the board so I've got two pieces now. And if I turn it this way so that you can see it's the back part of the board and it's got the holes for the dowel rods running through this piece and into this piece. Now what I need to do next is take my drill with my spade bit and drill these holes a little bit deeper so that the dowels can go a little bit further into this piece of wood. So that's what we're going to take care of next.
Now that I've got the holes drilled a little bit deeper, I want to make sure that I mark on this edge the orientation of the shelf. So if I look at the back, I've got my arrows pointed up. I want to transfer those arrows to the back of this so that I make sure that I've got the holes lined up with the back piece with the proper hole on the main piece. If you'll recall, when we were setting up the locations to drill holes for the dowel rods, we also marked on here where we would be drilling holes uh, so that we could put screws in through this into the studs in the wall. So we need to transfer those markings to the other side so we know this one is right at the end. So I'm going to come in about a half an inch and the other one is at 15 inches. So we're going to come in 15 inches and make a mark and we're going to drill our holes for our screws that will be going into the wall. So now that I've got my locations marked out, I'm going to take my spade bit once again and I'm going to countersink down into this piece of wood so that the screw doesn't have to go through quite so much wood. So I'm going to take my spade bit and drill about uh, halfway down through this piece of wood. And now that I have countersunk those holes, I'm just going to take my drill and can complete drilling the pilot hole through these two countersunk holes that I made. Now that I've got my holes drilled, I'm going to take my dowel rod, stick it down in there and mark where I need to cut it off. And I'm going to go over to the bandsaw and cut it off, and then I'll cut the other one. So you're probably starting to figure out how this goes together. This is the back piece. It's going to go up against the wall. There's going to be two screws that will be put into this hole, this hole that will go into the studs in the wall. Then we've got the main portion of the shelf that we will take. It has the dowel rods in, and we'll simply slide that into those holes and it will be held up onto the wall like that. All right, I want to cut the ledge to the proper length. So I've got a good square cut on this end of it. So I'm just going to line it up with the shelf, come down to the other end, take my pencil and make a mark where I need to cut it on my miter saw. And that feels real good. So the next thing I want to do before I attach my safety rail for the cats is to put a piece of 150 grit sandpaper on my sander. I'm going to do a little bit of sanding on my shelf, a little bit of sanding on the safety rail, uh, and then I'm going to glue the safety rail onto the shelf. Okay, I've done some sanding on the shelf and the piece of masonite, and I'm getting ready to attach this with just some glue and a few clamps, and uh, it should be ready for painting after that. Um, make sure that you've got the right side up. I look at my arrows, and I want them pointing up. Take my piece of masonite. Since both boards are flat against the surface, I need to check to make sure that my ends are lined up. Take a few clamps. There we go. Got it clamped up. Should dry in about uh, half an hour. So the glue is dry on the guardrail, so we're simply going to remove our clamps and our shelf is pretty much ready. Now if you didn't want the guardrail on there, if you're not making this for uh, your pet, for your cats to be crawling all over, just don't put this guardrail on there and you've got a great floating shelf. Well I just made a great discovery that I'm hoping will save you all some frustration. I should have done this next step before I put the guardrail on. What I'm, what was planning on doing was drilling a pocket hole in the top side of this shelf 
uh, so that it would pull the shelf to the board after I put it on. But what I discovered was when I put the shelf into my Craig jig and went to drill my hole, the drill itself hit that guardrail. So I'm not going to be able to do it that way. Okay, so since that didn't work out the way I had planned it, gives us a good teaching moment. And you might not have had a Craig jig anyway, so uh, what you can do if you don't have a Craig jig is take your regular drill with a small drill bit in it. And the idea is you start drilling your hole down and then you angle the drill bit so that it goes through at an angle. Still does kind of the same thing as the Craig jig just not quite as pretty. So you'll want to start your drill, get the hole going, tilt it up, and drill through your board. So my shelf is basically ready. I could put it up on the wall just the way it is and it would be fine, but I'm going to put a coat of primer on it and then put a coat of paint on it and then we'll be ready to install. So I've gotten my shelves painted and they're all ready to be installed, but I am going to do one more thing before I put those on. I've purchased a couple of rolls of shelf liner. It's kind of a little thin foam patty material. And I'm going to cut out a couple of pieces to fit on the shelves that I've made. And that's going to give the cats a little bit more grip when they jump on here. They won't go sliding on this uh, slick semi-gloss paint. Okay, I've got the shelf liner material cut to the proper size, so it's ready to go. So the next thing we're going to do is take these upstairs and get them installed. As you can plainly see, I'm out of the shop and I'm in the process of installing the catwalk shelves. I've already installed two of the shelves. The one on the left at the lower part is at the two foot mark. The one on the right, a little bit higher, is at the four foot mark. And I'm going to show you how to install another shelf up at the six foot level. This will be uh, like a switchback staircase for the cats to get up. So the first thing I need to do is to establish where the shelf is going to be. Obviously it's going to be over here against the wall on the left, but I need to put it at the six foot level. So I'm going to take my tape measure, measure six feet off of the ground, and make a pencil mark. So the next thing that I'm going to do is take my level, place it on the pencil mark, and draw a line. That way I can know where to line up the shelf bracket. If you'll recall, when we were making this back brace, we drilled countersink holes at the 15 inch mark and right here at the very end. And those will be the holes where the screws will go through and right into the wall into the stud because we know that that's where our studs are located. Each screw that I'm using, I put a small washer on there that will fit into the countersunk hole and keep the screw from being pulled all the way through the wood when I tighten it down. So I'm going to take my bracket and line the top edge up with the pencil mark that I just made. And I'm going to take my drill driver and screw these screws right into the studs. So the bracket has been attached securely to the wall. So the next thing we're going to do is take the dowel rods and we're going to put them into the holes that we drilled earlier and then we're going to attach the shelf. So in putting the shelf on, all we're doing is aligning the holes that are in the back of the shelf with the dowel rods. And once we get it lined up, it should just be a matter of putting it into place. And once the shelf is in place, we're just going to take one of our screws and we are going
going to put it through the hole that we drilled in uh, previously and it draws the shelf in place and holds it there securely. And the last thing we need to do is to take our shelf liner and put it into place. This will keep the cats from sliding around when they jump onto the shelf. And that's how you install a catwalk. So I've got all the shelves installed, or the catwalks installed. It's kind of a switch back stair step to get up to the very top shelf. And yes, I am bribing our cat Izzy to try out the, the new catwalk. So as you can see, all the cat shells have been put into place, and we've actually got a cat enjoying it right now. Yeah, that's what you can do when you put treats up there. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this project. Thanks a lot.